This time I'll call the Tuesday, October 12th, 2021 meeting of the Jackson County Board of Supervisors to order. We have Larry McDevitt, Mike Steinis, and myself, Jack Blewett, County Supervisor. We have Shelly Hoy blessing us today. And um, Bjorn Beck from the auditor's office. Um, Luann Gokey, our administrative assistant, um, is here. Um, and a break from normal. We have a much prettier face. <laughs> um, <laughs> County Treasurer Beth Gerlock is here. Dave uh, didn't have any business for us this morning. So if you'd like to come up, Beth. Sure, sure. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> All right. So you should have two resolutions in your packet for mobile home tax. No, no, no. Right. Would you like me to make copies of those? Oh. You can just go over them for us. Okay. So well, I received um, order for disposal of abandoned property court uh, court order for Lori Diane Quinn, plaintiff Makoka MHP LLC. Makoka to MHP LLC is the new owner of the Kenny Moore owned mobile home parks in town here. Mm -hmm. And they have um, two mobile homes that are worth saving and they're lots that um, they didn't purchase from him. So they're considered abandoned. Um, the owners are saying they did sell to Kenny Moore and title was never transferred. So what and Makoka to MHP has done is um, taken it as abandoned property to retain the mobile home. So on, on both of these, there's uh, county held tax sale certificates. Um, the taxes on the, the Quinn one haven't been paid uh, since 2017. And the Richard James I um, one hasn't been paid since 2014. And what's the total on them? Um, one is 800, eight the Quinn is eight, Quinn. 814, yeah. and, then and the I is 880. 80. Yeah. So basically, they went to tax sale, didn't get sold. Mobile homes usually don't. Went to tax sale second time at public bidder, didn't get sold, so they automatically become county held. And they've just been county held since then, and this mobile home has just been sitting there abandoned since then so they've gotten a court order now um, to either dispose of sell or sell it but they can also retain it and that's what they want to do they want to fix it up get the title in their name and then we would get renters in there and start collecting mobile home taxes again but we can't collect the back tax it doesn't appear to be um, because they went to court as abandoned property. There isn't really anyone to collect. But we from still them. own. What? Well, the county owns. We don't own them. We didn't. We well, don't. County held. A, we own the tax sale certificate because nobody purchased it. So we don't pay the taxes to ourselves. They just sit there unpaid when a county held tax sale certificate. So why don't we sell the tax certificate to them? To, to yeah, they'd have to. It. They'd have to want to buy it. You know, why are they gonna? It. Why they would they pay it for it? <laughs> Basically, it says if you read the court order here, it says plaintiff shall retain the mobile home. Retention of the mobile home shall discharge the judgment entered herein and any tax lien. So, basically, there isn't the old owners that have title to it or uh, they've abandoned it. They're not going to pay the taxes. The new owner is not either because they didn't take title to it. Um, and it wasn't sold to them. So what they've done is went through the abandonment process on these. And the abandonment process says you, you can take title. And what they have to do in order to take title, um, if they don't um, dispose of it or sell it, they can retain it. And in order to retain it, they have to send a letter to the mobile home last known owner and um, let them know that they're going to retain it and they have 21 days as the last known owner to object. And by objecting that says, I object, you have to sell it, you can't retain it. 
that would be the only difference. So the, the owner no longer, because they showed up at the hearing and, and didn't have any claim to the property, no one has any claim to it. That doesn't mean they have any, they can't take it back. All they can do is say, I don't want you to retain it. I want you to sell it. That's all they have at this point in the next 21 days for this one. Um, the Richard I one is different because he's deceased and he's been deceased. And that's when the taxes stopped getting paid was when he became deceased. So hard to pay. Yeah. Because, so, we don't have record of that. Do, do we don't follow up with that when they don't get paid? How many years back is that? That's been. That's from the 2016 and 2014. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when they don't get paid, we don't follow up or pursue it then? There, they sit as county health tax sale certificates because there isn't anyone to collect from. It's still sitting there, so we can't, I mean, really do anything about Can it. Can I ask where they're looking? Um, Timber City Mobile Home Park. Out on Farrell, on um, Pershing Road, right? Yeah, I think that's the Timber City the one. Make and model of them. Um, it's on here, 1970. Monarch is a 69 Monarch. Richard Eyes, the other one is a. Cameron, and it's 75. Right. So at this point, I feel the best option is to let the new mobile home park owner get these cleaned up. So he's that's his whole goal is to re retain it, fix it up, rent it out. So then once he once they own it, they have to start paying taxes on it. Yeah, that's a positive side of it. So we are we haven't taxes. been collecting on these and there isn't really anyone in either situation to collect from. Mm -hmm. But in this case we can start collecting taxes again, which is the and goal. You, who did you say was the new owner of the trailer park? Makokata MHP LLC. M as in Michael. Uh -huh. H H P L L C. Uh, the guy, the manager that I've been dealing with, his name is Ludwig Diaz. Um, so he's the one who's trying to get the parks in good order again to where there aren't just mobile homes sitting in the park that nobody knows who owns them or what's going on with them. He's actually trying to, to get good order going there, which helps me out. Know, I would meetings. make a motion to approve the mobile home tax abatement request as presented. A second. A motion. Can we do them both at once? I don't care. we will be approving two resolutions at <coughs> once. I'm sorry. Yes. Resolution number. It was 839 and 840. So we'll go with 839 first, which is the Quinn, mm -hmm. Laura, Diane, Carey, Crary, Quinn. That's my motion. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Now I'll make a motion to approve the other resolution number 840 10 12 2021. As presented. Second. The motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. All right. Thank you. Thank so you. We'll sign these and get them to you. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. We'll start with you. It's not quite 1215, and I don't think there's any citizens online that would be addressing us, but if they come online, we'll, we'll give them the opportunity. Shelly. Okay. I'm busy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The first one I have is well, first thing I have is the minutes from October 5th. To be approved. Motion to approve. Second. The motion and a second to approve the minutes of October 5th for publication. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Then the next is um, claims uh, in the amount of $344.900. $344,911.82. I wish. Move to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. And now the resolutions. First one I have is an operating transfer for the first is resolution number 836 10 10 12 2021 for the first 
half interest fund operating transfer for fiscal year 2021-2022 in the sum of $607,600 from the Rural Basic Fund to the Secondary Road Fund effective October 12th, 2020. And motion to approve. I would second. Mm -hmm. Motion and a second for the um, resolution to transfer six hundred and seven thousand six hundred dollars to the from the rural basic fund eleven to the secondary roads fund. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Motion carried. And then the next thing I have is resolution number eight thirty seven dash ten dash twelve dash twenty twenty one for the annual interfund operating transfer for fiscal year 2021-2022 in the sum of $25,000 from the general basic fund to the secondary road fund effective October 12th. This is our normal time of transfers for these. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. I would move to approve. Second. Give a motion and a second to approve the transfer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. motion carried. And the next thing I have is resolution number 838-10-12-2021 for the annual interfund operating transfer for, uh, for fiscal year 2021-2022 in the sum of $3,200 from the general basic fund to the historic preservation fund uh, effective October 12, 2021. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the, the, the transfer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carry. Then the next one is uh, resolution number 839-10-12-2021. Oh, we did that. Sorry. B and E are done. Yes. Um, then I have a motion needed to approve the Limestone Bluff RC and D membership agreement for support for fiscal year 2021 2022. So moved. Second. So the motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. And the last thing I have is resolution number 841-10-12-2021 to approve $550,000 in American Rescue Plan dollars be spent on emergency 911 equipment. Motion to approve. Second. It's been um, moved and seconded, but I think we should read it. Here you go. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah. Resolution approving the American Rescue Plan dollars to be spent on emergency 911 equipment. Whereas Jackson County is dedicated to the citizens and believes that quick emergency response plays a vital role in the overall health and welfare of its citizens. And whereas under Code of Iowa Chapter 34A-3, Jackson County is charged with maintaining the Jackson County Emergency 911 Service Board which has, has delivered long-standing emergency support to citizens and businesses throughout the Jackson County area. And whereas the current emergency radio response system has been overwhelmed by the current COVID-19 pandemic situation, which, does not, which doesn't show signs of abating and has been shown by the pandemic to be in need of an upgrade. And Whereas the Emergency 911 Service Board has researched and developed a plan to address a response to the COVID-19 pandemic, including the outdated and overwhelmed radio response system. And whereas the focus of the emergency radio response system is, re is to receive emergency contact from citizens, businesses, and other emergency response personnel and support. And whereas a new emergency radio response system will strengthen all county and municipal emergency personnel's ability to more quickly react and respond to citizens, businesses, and situations that impact all who reside in and do business with those in the county. And whereas the county received American Rescue Plan money to be used for public health purposes for which 
it has been determined that an upgraded emergency radio response system would qualify as a public health purpose due to the overwhelming use of the system for responding to COVID-19 affected situations. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Supervisors of Jackson County, Iowa, that in order to mitigate the COVID-19 pandemic, it is in the best interest of Jackson County, Iowa, to approve and authorize Jackson County spending the American Rescue Plan dollars for the emergency radio response system upgrade for the Jackson County Emergency 911 Service Board, thereby approved by the Board of Supervisors for Jackson County upon this 12th day of October, 2021. Amen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. And that concludes your business. That's, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> that means Grandma Luann is here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> She's got a grandson here. So. I do. Oh, wow. Yes. He's here visiting from Utah. Mm. First time they fly in? Huh? First yep. time out of state. Well, How no, old? not quite. No. Two and a half. Oh, well, that's keeping you busy. Oh, yes. Talking, jabbering. Running the house. Running the house. <laughs> that's what they do. That's right. Okay. Um, calendar for this week. Tonight at four o'clock is a Macomba River Watershed Management Authority Executive Meeting for Larry. Tomorrow, October 13th at 10 a.m. is a zero to five and 60 minutes meeting by Zoom for Jack. At 11.30 is a Mississippi Valley Workforce Lunch and Learn by Zoom for any of you that want to attend that. And at six o'clock is a 911 service board meeting for Mike. Thursday, October 14th at 7 a.m. is Bellevue Hometown Pride meeting by Zoom for Mike. At 10 o'clock is an Iowa DHS Council meeting by Zoom for Jack. And at four o'clock is a local emergency planning committee meeting by Zoom for all of you. Um, in addition, is on Friday, October 15th, um, starting at 6.45 in the morning, going until seven o'clock at night is the Grant Wood Loop marketing um, tour, I guess, because it goes to various locations and that's for Mike. <clears throat> Monday, October 18th at 10 a.m. is uh, tentatively anyway a waste authority meeting of Jackson County for Mike. At three o'clock is the regional governing board meeting in Davenport for Jack. At six o'clock is the public hearing on the Bellevue annexations, and that's in Bellevue. And at seven o'clock that night is together we build meeting for Jack. Tuesday, October 19th is our next regular meeting at 9 a.m. And at six o'clock that evening is the conservation board meeting by Zoom. Um, the business I have today is a letter of support um, to the Jackson County Public or to the Makokana Public Library Board. Um, Makokana Board of Supervisors. Sorry, let me start over. The Jackson County Board of Supervisors would like to express our support for the Jackson County Historical Society's Robert A. Milliken Committee's proposal to erect an Iowa State Historical Study marker at the Makokota Public Library. This marker would commemorate the scientific contributions of Makokota High School alumnus Robert A. Milliken, which led to him becoming the first American-born recipient of the Nobel Prize in Physics. The marker would be funded and manufactured by the State Historical Society as part of its commemoration of Iowa's 175th anniversary of statehood with local resources being used for mounting and maintaining the marker. In our view, the Makokota Public Library is an excellent and appropriate place for this marker. The library has its own notable history and remains a focal point for learning and exploration. As a library, it has the staff and resources to both educate the public and interpret Milliken's work and legacy. As a public space, it provides visibility for this marker, enabling Makokota residents and visitors to learn about one of Makokota's most notable citizens. An additional connection between Milliken and the Makokota Public Library comes through William Boardman, whose library became part of the current library's collection, the Boardman Reference Library. Predicting great things for Milliken, Boardman bequeathed funds to the young man that allowed him to further his education. 
As a scientist, Millikan made many momentous discoveries, chiefly in the fields of electricity, optics, and molecular physics. In 1923, he was honored with the Nobel Prize for Physics for his study of the elementary electronic charge and the photoelectric effect. Thank you so much for your consideration of this matter. Looking for approval to have uh, Chairman sign that letter. There has been a, a Millikan committee that has been working and um, there's been students from college over in Cedar Rapids and um, uh, kind of a Millikan group and they were looking at different locations to put this plaque. Courthouse was one of them, and but they decided that they thought maybe the library would be the most appropriate location. So they just wanted a letter of support from, from us to the library board saying we thought it was a good idea. I read through that um, last test of will, will and testament. Oh, oh Wordman's, yes. And and I wasn't in tune as to when it was written. And it's going down and starts giving these people each a hundred dollars. I'm like, a hundred dollars. And here it was written in 1880, which yes. back then it would have been quite a bit of money. So yeah, to um and they gave him a thousand, he gave uh, Milliken a thousand dollars to go to school, which would have probably been a lot of money mm -hmm. in the 1890s or whatever he wanted. Yeah. I would make a motion to have the chair sign the letter of um, support. Second. A motion and a second to approve the chair signing the letter of support and submit it to the Mokokoda Library Board. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. That's all I have. You. Thanks. Okay. Is, is Marty coming? Do you know? I guess we're early for him, so. I guess at this board, board and commissions, I see we hired a, a new alliance person. Yes, we did, director. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Comes with some credentials also. Yes, she does. Yes. She is um, going to be a, a, a real asset, I think. She can start off running. Yeah. Was she at that meeting in Bellevue? Bellevue. Yes, she was. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought it was her, but I'm not yep. sure. Okay. That was her. She was very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly when she's starting, but it's. Uh, it said in the email, I can't remember what it said. Maybe the first one. That's what stuck in my mind, but I, I wasn't yeah. sure if that was in, what it was in like. Or not the email, yeah, it was the email, it was the first and, uh, and I believe, um, um at, our, at our meeting last week, um, when we made the decision to offer her the position and she accepted. Um, we are also going to at least interview for an assistant. Um, to replace Stephanie? No, to replace David. Oh. This David will be leaving the 1st of June. And so the board thought it would be best to hire somebody that could work with Kelly and David um, for a few months before David retires. So, I haven't heard back yet from David when the, when the interviews will be, but we have a couple other individuals that we considered as the director. And um, the one indicated that he would be interested in uh, an assistant position. And the other one they were going to check with to see if he would be interested in a, an assistant position. So, I haven't heard from David as to. I'm sure we consider the competition might be it. Yeah, yeah. So, but we wanted to wait till Kelly was hired so that she could be a part of the interview process. Because it doesn't when say on in, this uh, press release, but I thought I read it in the email. What? When she starts. I, 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 do, I do not remember. I think she had to give. 
at least two weeks notice. Um, so. Oh, uh, well, here it does say the first line. Maybe I should read the first line. Effective November 1st. <laughs> Thank you. So, at this time we'll recess um, until we're joined by either Marty or Christina. We'll reconvene and we're joined by Christina Trenell. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, Marty, about those. Walking all over the place. <laughs> so, do we have a copy of that? No. Um, just a couple of highlights. Um, GIS department updates, working on the redistricting mapping, and some 911 updates to all the mapping there. Um, also, notice that the zoning map needs to be updated too. So, there's a couple errors on that that need to get fixed. Um, for the zone, sorry, that was GIS. For the zoning department, um, Working on the revised FEMA flood maps, those become effective January 28, 2022. So um, I'm revising the floodplain management ordinance, and that will be reviewed for recommendation by the Zoning Commission with the public hearing on October 25th, um, in a couple weeks here. And then that will go to you guys for approval as well. Um, and we'll hold a public hearing for that too. Uh, the next ordinance update that I want to do is including a solar panels in our ordinance, uh, you know, with the Go Solar Jackson County initiative, we need to kind of get that updated. Too. Good idea. Yeah. Um, I'm also working on setting up a meeting with Marla Quinn from ECIA regarding uh, how to find the ordinances. Um, that was something that I think was put on hold for a little while until I started. And so I'm going to get that up and going and get that all. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Marla will be a good person to work with. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is that I will be attending the Iowa planning conference in Des Moines this week from Wednesday to Friday. That is all I have. That's it. Mm -hmm. You talked about the redistricting for the yes. county. For, uh -huh. has, has, the, has the committee met that we had to appoint to review the districts for the boards? I haven't heard Lisa talk about it, but she didn't necessarily talk about it yeah the last time i talked to her she said we didn't have the counts yet um, oh for the population? population we do have that yep okay mm -hmm. did so you get official changed. notification or you went went somewhere else? i just went online um to the census.gov website why can't they notify people that need the figures <laughs> i don't know okay because we had a point wasn't it a five-person board to review that and uh decide the, the lines that we're going to have for the supervisor districts. Mm -hmm. So do you have a map of, of such a thing? I do, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have the, I'm guessing is from the 2010 redistricting. I have a map, map okay. of that. Same one that's on your counter, you mean? Yeah, it would be. Sure, color-coded. But hers has populations, I'm sure. And yeah. Within I can't the imagine there's a lot of change, mm -hmm. right? Not a lot. I mean, I think our population only grew by like maybe 300, if that. Um, at least it grew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I did actually look at, um, redrew the map with the new numbers. And yeah, it's pretty similar. I don't know. There's like a percent of deviation that you can have. Um, so there's the districts are supposed to be split evenly by population. Yeah. It can deviate a little bit. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, if it if it could stay the same or not. Maybe. So you gotta put a loop in somewhere? A little bit, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that something that you can email? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, why don't you email it to Lynn and she can get us copies of it so we can okay. look at it. Sounds good. Um, so I think I'm the only one that might be in question because I live right on a line. Okay. You know. Yeah. Um, and I was looking at it. I'm not sure. I don't know where you live, <laughs> but I was actually thinking of how how your district was set up before. Maybe actually including a couple more pieces so that it would just be Makokota and a couple of the. There's like little pockets, and I, I feel like it would be better to just get rid of the pockets, you know. See, years ago, when I when I was first on, 
Um, I had three quarters of the city of Maquoketa okay. over to Baldwin and Monmouth. Yeah. And the other district was the other third, JC's was the other third of Maquoketa, Sabula. Okay. And then the legislature, in their wisdom, said they couldn't divide a subdivision. So um, uh, yeah. okay. I became an island within the second district or the yeah. third district. Here's a map. I'm trying to figure out where that. Here's yeah. the vote. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is where I vote. Oh, okay. No. Oh, yeah. And this is Diane Stockers. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just take a look at that. I think that you would still be, you're still in it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. I wasn't changing it like that. I still that back for yeah. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so the committee decides yeah or nay, correct? I, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, the committee will work with, I would say, will work with Christina to divide the population. Okay. Can you tell me then, has the new line changed from like east to west? Like, no. no. Mm -hmm. I mean, it hasn't moved north or south. In no. Hours. No. But I guess I don't know what the committee wants to see either. I don't know if they want to just keep it similar to what it was before. I guess that's, I'm assuming that they would. I don't know. Overall, maybe all three districts increased by you know, 100 people. So, yeah, it might not be a yeah. change. Yeah. So. Right. It'll be interesting to see now what the committee for the state comes up with for um, since the mm -hmm. the yeah I saw man. what the old one was and what the new one was. It's like they're trying to flip flop the whole eastern. Side. Oh, it's unbelievable! I don't, I don't know yeah. how you could have your district from that far north to that far south and cover that much well, area. I think it said in the debut paper over the weekend there was an article and they said that one of the legislators, if they were elected. It would be a five hour trip to get from one side of their district to the other side. Yeah. Oh my God. And they said it's just a what they call centralized districts. It doesn't fit into that. They're supposed to be compact. Yeah. So I was really happy when the legislators turned it down because I just I couldn't yeah, couldn't quite see the, yeah. the the way they had it drawn. So I guess we'll wait and see what, see what they're right doing. that I put 44 of the representatives in the same district as their colleague or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. It was a huge amount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. I, so I, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was a couple of more than that. Yeah. Well, I know it did our two. Out of 99 counties, yes. Yeah. I know it did our senator and our representative. Yeah. Put them I'm head sorry. to head with one of their <laughs> colleagues. <laughs> That would be interesting to see that map or see if there was no compare it to the old map. I guess if we could yeah. Yeah. send them both side by side. That'll be great. Yep, yeah, I can do it. Yeah, that's they have um I can't like, imagine there'd be a lot of change. So there's not a lot of change in yeah. Baldwin or Monmouth or I will Major Lake or anywhere for that say it. That'll be my now. So I'm impressed somebody picked up some. Yeah. Well, wait and see. Thank you, Christina. Yeah, thank Enjoy you. your trip to Des Moines and learn yeah. lots. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Drive safe. Okay. Yes, thank absolutely. You. Thank you. <clears throat> this time we'll recess till we're joined by Marty. At this time, this time we'll reconvene and we're joined by maintenance supervisor Marty Hublik. Good morning. <clears throat> Some of those roads for secondary roads too that they use for the winter. What's that? Well, now, now. <laughs> I didn't hear what he said. Okay. Probably just as well. Okay. So anyway, I'm all but ready to start cutting off the tubes at the Welcome Center or uh, the care facility. <laughs> Wrong building. Maybe did we take an experiment like that, or did we? No. I finally found out which tubes to cut, and he said just cut them off, put them below the ground, and be done with it. I got to leave five tu tubes, the five top tubes across the top there, and we can bury the rest. I mowed it with the tractor. Yeah. And then I mowed around each of the tubes because I don't want to knock dirt down in there because he says if you knock dirt down in there, it could plug the system. So I'm trying to be very careful. 
So okay. we're just taking the tube out, whacking it off, and sticking it back down in there with the cap. I'm just cut. I'm digging down alongside of it, cutting it off, and take the cap off, put it down in. That way, I don't drop dirt down in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Instead of pulling much? the tube out, just yeah. dig down alongside of it, cut it off with the uh, reciprocating saw, and then putting the cap back on. It. Okay. So then, how much? Soil will be on top of them caps. Well, I hope a foot. An inch or two a foot. Yeah. yeah, I hope a foot. Okay, and then do we have a way to locate them before you go cover them up? Um, you got a nickel? You could put in each one. <laughs> Again, I didn't hear what you put said. a nickel on the cap of each one. You can find um, something. Why would we need to do that? I guess is my question. He never said anything about it. He said just cut them off and bury. He said the only ones you need is the five on the top. So are those lines straight from the ones you're going to lead to you back to a certain area? I mean, like the no, north and south are straight, right? He said, well, they might well, they're fairly, they're fairly straight <laughs> this way, but from one to the other, they run at a slant. You know, from from the building toward the pond, they run at a. A slant, yeah. yeah. But the tube, the tubes that are, are fairly in a row, fairly close this way. They're not perfect, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, maybe just a good picture of it. You know, before you start, of the ones you're going to leave, have those in the picture, and then we certainly the have the diagram or something. I would certainly think put they would, we had the plans for when yeah. they did it. But we know how that always works. Yeah. yeah. No. We, what I'm we, saying is, like, we were following the floor plan in here and ended up digging like eight foot further than it really was or it was supposed to be. But the point is, if you had, like you said, if you had them something metal that you could detect each one on each row, and then if you knew how far apart they were, just write it, they write it down or, or document it, you know. But what would be metal? Well, you'd have huh? Wire. Yeah, you yeah. could put. <laughs> You could put three nails on top of each one. Okay, well, or, that's, you know, that's what I was wondering what you wanted there. You know, because there's a they're plastic now. Scrap piece of sheet metal, you know, like that. I, or I can understand that. Or a nickel. Or a nickel. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if that For a quarter, be maybe that'd be Is there enough metal in a nickel in I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. You know, metal detectors pick it up when they're looking for coins yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And some people just find yeah, some I good know, stuff. I mean, I don't think I can get you little square pieces of like well, I could probably get something out of the scrap metal over there. I've certainly got enough metal to put on there, maybe with a screw or something to do that. But it's going to take a hundred of them. Because no, I think you just take each row, you know, one one on the first first well, row on the row. And then I mean, you're going to leave the end one on each row, so you got a reference there. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you are on by the building side, correct? Right? Yeah. Yeah, but not. Yeah, and the rest of them will just follow. Down the road like this because they're zigzag. I think if they're only 10 inches, you need to in the program if you know how far between yeah. they are. Too. Yeah. And there again, do you really need to see yeah. where they're at? I don't know. Yeah. Because I'm sure the next thing we'll do is dig it up and replace it because it's, you know, it's only good for so many years, isn't it? If I remember right. Okay. With that being said, we toured the hospital, which I think was very positive. There's a lot of stuff up there. I thought. We could use in here, probably in in the jail. Um, I think with the, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think with the road construction going on and the water being shut off and turned on, I think I worked on every toilet, drinking fountain, and urinal in the building and the sheriff's office uh, because they all are not working right. So I these big filters you can buy. Maybe we have one of those on the. It probably one hurts, but like the drinking fountain, I've changed it twice here. Usually you change it like once a year and I've changed them twice here in the last two months. So there's stuff coming through and I'm pretty sure that's what's causing our problems. But I'm, you know. You think I, that's from when they hit this line out here? Well, I think when they shut it off and interrupt it, I think the debris the sediment and everything gets pushed around. Yeah. yeah. And these diaphragms, if the littlest thing gets underneath it, it won't flush. Uh, the <laughs> women's restroom is terrible for it. The jail back in there, I, I've been working on them for months trying to get them to work. I think I finally got them yesterday. Uh, it just, it, it's, they're just full of crap, is what it is. So why don't you check what size water lines you got coming in and see what a couple filters cost? Okay. 
you know, we don't have to be anything I super. Think, just I think it's like an inch and a quarter coming in, but yeah. Um, little things around here. I got a combination lock for Arlene. And we several of them up at the hospital we could use, though, correct? Or no? Well, if if they don't sell the building, because oh, it, it's was, if it was my understanding, they're a fixed fixture. Part of the building. But we put our name on it if we can get it. I had one, but it was locked on both sides. And without telling Arlene that, I just said I had a lock took it and got it fixed because I didn't have the tools to, it takes a couple of little things to do that. Took it and got it fixed and she realized it was a double lock and she really don't want that. She just wants to be able to people to punch in and get out, okay? So with that being said, we have a lock on our door, but we also have the key fob. And I told her if it's okay with everybody, we just take the lock off our door and give it to her that way it's just one side, you know, and then, you know, we would still have the key fob if that works for everybody. Uh, over in the treasurer's office, I'm making little shells to put her license plates in. Um, made like four or five of them. Took the dividers out of some shells. So they had a just a regular shelf type thing instead of with the dividers in it. Um, the gal down, Shannon Weber, has had COVID, so like five times during the day while she had that, I went down and unlocked the building for her because she was not able to make it in. So I did that just to help her out a little bit. Um, we have a problem with people driving, I believe it's Grove Street. It's where the parking lot is for the softball diamonds, mm -hmm. are driving through the yard, through the, our buildings, instead of going out around the road. They're just cutting they cable that. Well, I did, but now what they did, instead of coming on this side of this Operation New View, they're driving in between Operation New View and the senior citizen. They're coming through there. I contacted, talked to Lisa, I contacted. Frank Ellis to see if we could get something done, but that was a week ago and nothing has been done so far. She was going to get a hold of Lanny and see if they parked the school buses up there that they got parked down at the fairgrounds, but I haven't, <laughs> I haven't heard back. Well, that parking lot, I mean, when you come in there, that parking lot for the ball diamond, they just need to cable that. Well, I went up, I've been going up there to see if it's done. I, they, Somebody did put a, a rope, a nylon rope across there, but it was broke laying on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Right, true. That city, you mean, doing that? I, I don't know who put the rope across. Well, I know I did. I, I put the cable up on ours right behind the senior right. building. I did that. Um, Over by the ball diamond, I'm talking. That's the opposite side there. Yeah, yeah. I did uh, that. There's a goal that had some ropes on it or something. Pardon me? Years ago, I think that had ropes on it. What did the parking lot for the ball diamond? Is that well, that could be I, I, that's a long time ago. What I don't remember coming in by the by the racetrack for yeah, the well no up further. The racetrack okay. is to the west. Okay. This is I believe it's Grove Street. So they're shooting yeah, straight so across cool. basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Been doing it uh in the wintertime. I push snow there in a big pile that, that eliminated it then. But as soon as the snow melts and they start driving across again. So whose responsibility on the north end that we call over by Grove Street then? Is that the city's or is that our responsibility? Well, we thought it would be the city, but when I say we, Lisa and I were talking about that, but we're so not for sure. Yeah. Like but Mary? isn't but is it on isn't the ball field, the softball field on county property? Yes, I do believe so. Yeah. So but see what we're worried system. about is somebody gonna get hit and then we're gonna get sued. Uh, you know. The city leases it. Yeah, yeah. Leases. right. And then we get parking places. Yes. There's a couple extra light poles laying there. And if I can get permission to have, maybe like have secondary roads go up there with a fork truck or the end loader and move it over here and lay it in there so they can't drive over it. Could uh, would that be okay with you guys? Work, yeah. I would if, try anything you can. 
Yeah, well, Roger and I. Maybe Matt or get that strip thing that they put down when they're trying to stop the speeding <laughs> car. You know, I thought few, about putting spikes there, but then I thought I'd probably get in trouble people, doing that. A few people run over that and ruin their tires, they'll quit going there. Yes. Roger, with with the permission of, I don't know if it was this county engineer, the last one, we put a sign up where they were going before, and all what they do is just keep moving up. So if we could take the like the end loader with forks or something, there's a great big telephone pole there that we could lay there, then they wouldn't be able to get over. And then I think it would eliminate that. Well, just see what you can work out. Yeah. All right. Um, are you going to coordinate somewhat with Frank or Mallory or somebody? Well, I'll let Frank know we're going to do it if, that, if I have to. But if it's our ground, we should be able to do it. But you tell me what you want. I and that's would say what I'll just do. clue him in on what you're going to what yeah. you're going to do is so he's will, aware of it. But I would do the whole parking lot with it. So there's no well, to be honest with you, most of it's that way, except for about three spots where they're driving through. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. And on that, that's about it. Okay. What are we going to do about the additional parking for the for the Operation New View building? What did you want to well, do? Well, well, Lisa and I talked, and I've talked to Rennell, and we thought, well. We didn't know if it would be best to just take the parking lot and take it to the street like it is at the senior center mm -hmm. and just concrete that front so they would have another row of parking. That was my idea. Or if we would go along the side after you cut down the mulberry tree yeah. and put some parking along the side of the building back by the fence and that side entrance into yeah. New View so they could come in, go in that way. But Does Ramel have a... Preference. No, she does. She doesn't. When I talked to her, she doesn't have a preference. All she needs. Either one of them would be a good idea. So I if think. it's on the side by the mulberry tree, is that on the, between the two buildings? Is that no, no? It's on, it's on the west side okay. of the Operation Newview right. building. All right. So would it be better? There's quite a bit of area back there along the building and along that fence that it it would. It would but doesn't make more parking. sense for us to pour concrete if we're going to do that to do it out front rather than back behind for either customer purposes or visitors or I think from, from what you're saying I think out front does because all the people park there to drop their kids off and stuff and I think that would open that up up in, in there but it's it's whoever it works for best is what I I would say she wanted like seven parking spots right more something like that and i measured that one day and if we do the front if we go from uh the the east side of that green space to the west side there's at least a good seven spaces in there doesn't matter to me. i looked at it once while is that something you want done yet? yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay it would make it better for winter purposes too wouldn't it would well, yeah. be made better for pushing snow because i don't know whoever showed them how to pour concrete but it it's got 15 angles on it and it's hard to tell where the sidewalk is yeah. you know yeah. and then the next thing you know you're into the dirt and then you got a big plot of dirt that you gotta you know so it should this, have been straight square is this something that we get somebody to do or yes okay yeah. and you think we can get somebody to do it? well that's the next thing yeah. well I, I i think we can but it'll we'll have to see so how big an area is it i'm gonna is say seven how many square feet how many yards? I guess pretty good size. It's, it's going to be just pick a contractor and start calling them. And if you find one, just have them do it. We well, have to bid it out. That's up to you. Yeah, it's it's a pretty good. I space. think I can get two people to give us a quote on. Okay, let's do I that. really do. All right, do that. And then we can get secondary roads to go down and and grade it off. Well, I'll leave that up to you. Well, we'll okay. We'll, we'll work it out. Okay. Yeah, they, they got, can use their new gloves and they got a new they, they got a machine close enough that they can I'll leave that up to you. Okay. All right. Okay, so have have a couple guys go down and look at it and give us a quote and we can I will call them as soon as I step out of here. Okay. Did okay. we what? Did we ever talk to engineers? Well Roger room? come out and looked at it. He's and I'm here. not really he wants the glue. Uh, bumpers on top of that and Blue what? Uh, rubber bumpers on top of that and I just you know it's it, the problem is if you fix it over there then it's going to push it around and it's flat here we need to rechange the concrete from 
not clear to the end. If we had a lip on that uh, that much, maybe, it would it maybe was, that much. Well, yeah, more than Mary, but yeah. two inches would would cure it because when it comes over there, it's only this much. So are we talking about just cutting the end of it off and pouring a curb, or is that what you're saying? Or I would like to pouring? take out about 12 foot of concrete all the way around here, or 10 foot, whatever it is, and angle it and make it go back below the, the, the wall that's there, like it was back in the day. See, what happened is when they did redid the parking lot, they instead of digging down, they just poured four inches of concrete right on top of the existing blacktop. And then it made it flush with the, the wall that kept the water from going in the courthouse. And every time we get a super big rain, the, the water from the uh, Niagara Street comes down, comes in and goes right down into the window of the extension office. Well, then we built a little wall. Well, then it just passes it down and then the floor drain can handle it. Then it comes around and goes down this step and it's got a two inch floor drain. Then it goes down the, down the hallway and it's been cleared down the elevator room before. That we've had to clean up. So, with that all being said, you were going to talk to the engineer, work something out. So, are we still talking about it, or do we make a decision? Yes. Well, Roger come out, looked yeah. at it, like yeah. I said, and I'm and I'm not really disagreeing. But if you fix like he wants, then it's just going to move it along so it it comes up here and then goes down the ramp. Just discuss that with him. Well, no, because he wanted to think about it and then just talk to me over the phone. Right, I haven't been back down. Let's make a move. Okay. All right. We'll be talking about one of these days. We'll do something, either one or the other. Okay. I mean, the whole the whole parking lot needs to be shot for great. And right. sit down and look at it and figure the whole thing out so it works. Right. Well, back in the day, I thought they were going to lower the middle and then make it go like this and then run it out the thing. That ain't what happened. Yeah. It, every, if you ever notice. Maybe that needs to happen. Right. So has Alex come down and looked at it? Who, uh, who's Alex? Alex is our assistant, no, yeah, no. county engineer. The only guy that I know looked at it is Rodney. With well, we need to have Alex come down and look at well, it. Well, you know, we left it up to David if he was going to make a decision or have Alex come down. That's what we left. I, I think if I think if the county engineer looks at it and goes out and answers, I think he can do it. It, it ain't going to take, it is a rock science. It just needs to fall the other direction instead of towards the you, building. You three get your heads together, you and Roger and David, and make a decision out there. Okay. Anything else? And then contract it out. Okay. Yeah, go on. All right. Thank you. Have a great week. See you. You also. So who's your work session with? Um, I, I think it's just for us to discuss. Um, um, we went to on a tour of the hospital last week um, with quite a group of people mm -hmm. <laughs> from the courthouse and from the Together We Build. And, um, and the whole group came in and everybody stayed together, just like planned. <laughs> What? Well, no, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't. It was like, and then the guys that were leading us, they went one way, and we were looking at something, and then I couldn't find them. <laughs> okay, but we did. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah assist us in our endeavor with the new jail. Um, but we were told that we had to have what we wanted, the things that we could take, we had to have out by the end of the month. Yep. So Larry did make the contact with a, a hauler and we got that done. Got um, them reserved for two days with a couple people, probably three people, I think so. And as I said, the Together We Build crew said that they would come and help what we'd like to do, I think, is go up a few days before that to haul the stuff back to the loading dock area so that we're not having to transport it mm -hmm. that day. And make sure we got everything that we want. I mean, stuck, it's stuck in rooms all over the place. So it'll take a while to figure out where it's No, going. actually, there's not a lot of time left for that. So no, I mean, no. next week, somebody should be yeah. doing moving stuff already. Yeah. So we can get together we build to help us and help I'll somebody. talk to Lori and I'll talk to Dean and see if there's a day a day or I don't know. I would say a day. Actually, yeah, for fun. them guys that are working on the farm this week would be good for the rain for not for their they're done for a while. 
So, and then some of the stuff that we had put our label on, um, we won't know till in December whether we get that stuff, mm -hmm. which wasn't told us before, <laughs> yeah. but um, we'll wait and see how that all works out. And um, I'll get some of that stuff, like the copy machines and monitors and stuff, that needs to be here or someplace where it's climate controlled. Well, the building that we're looking at, both of them are climate controlled. Oh. One is the Peace Pipe Players building, and the other one is um, Hollander. Well, that one's Lisa's checking on, and I had called the individual. Oh, he, he, called, he called about the one on um, ben Jacobson Drive, okay. and it is climate controlled. Oh, okay. And he said, we've got plenty of space in the for you guys. If, I mean, we didn't have any agreements or anything, but. Okay. His uh, his coordinator, his guy is supposed to call me or get a hold of me today. Good. So that would lock those areas. Um, but you're right, the copying machines, the televisions, all of that will, and we'll have to have something that knows how to take them, take them apart and take them well, down. That's the other thing. Maybe Marty could even go start doing that if maybe if we want to have him take that. Or Bjorn, Bjorn, you want to do that? This one. <laughs> what am I doing? Well, well, we yeah. have we get all the TVs. Okay. We get all the copying machines. Um, and all of that stuff will have to be well, the copying machines don't have to be unhooked, but the TVs are. They're all mounted on the wall. Okay. But um Bob said we could take those. I think you're taking them off the wall, take the brackets with them. <laughs> Yeah, so you yeah, have them, 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 them together. Yeah, that's way, but yeah. And we get all the chairs. Um, a lot of chairs. And we get the conference table and the chairs around the conference table. And the in, and the intercom system or the, the the sound system. Yeah. In conference room. We're told we can have it. And the projector thing. Yep, yeah, and, and the projectors. Mm -hmm. That might be more, I guess, urgent than the TVs wouldn't take much to take them off, but it's, I don't know what's all involved in this system, camera system. And the yeah, that conference room, that'd be good to go down and take notes and pictures, apart and whatever. I mean, maybe understand it, but make sure that whole system stays in one. And um, their phone system is Cisco, which is what Lisa said we have. Isn't it? I thought well, that's what she I said. Well, I don't know. It might be a Cisco, but we don't have a Cisco system. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought she said yeah. we did. That's a new system they have. It looks different than what we have. Okay. Well, the phone system that's up there is still there. And um, but I, I would think that if the sound system is, is there, maybe whoever they purchased it from could take it back down or at least tell us how to take it down. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think they're still around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well it's fairly new. The sound system in in yeah. the in the conference room is new. Well the phone system is fairly new too. Yeah, right? That's a year and a half old, I think. Mm -hmm. So I mean I would think that was something that together we built could I think they're essentially used. I think they're interested in that. So anyway, we'll have to do some coordinating this week and see what we can come up with. I'll talk to, I'll talk to Dean and uh, the guys from the Together We Build. And um, they do have a meeting next week, but I'll talk to them ahead of time. So maybe they can coordinate when they might be available next week yeah. before the weekend. And I'll get a hold of, I'll let Luann know so she can get a hold of you and let I her. mean, it could be an evening thing, correct? Or two? Sure. Also, yeah. A couple evenings, we could do that too. Somebody let us in. Yeah. And, yeah. Or even start it after dinner or something. Well, yeah. whatever. Well, they want us to get it out of there by the end of the month. So, so, so you know, if this is when we can do it. i check on that system. Yeah. I had an election coming up too. That's yeah. an issue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, 
but you could probably call and talk to Bob and he might know what the system is mm -hmm. and give you some direction, at least who you might be able to contact or something. Do you remember when the hospital's having their auction? Remember 8th of December. Yeah. But we can, whatever desks we want, all of that is an attached and the shelving units and lockers, lockers and and that and the the metal trays that that Lisa wants for voting oh, machines. The shelving things. Shelving yeah, they're, things. They're nice. They're nice racks. Okay. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff to haul and to move. So um, we just have to get it done. Yep. So I'll get back to Luann. She can let you know and. We'll go from there. And if you want to talk to Bob at the hospital and see what, yeah, it'd be great. There's some racks in there that have cherries in them too. Maybe if we can just stack them and tie them somehow. So you could just roll the whole rack out the door and up into their trailer. Well, in the in the old cafeteria room, yeah, there's they're all stacked up at the end of the end of the. Room. There are some carts in there in that room too, but there might be some other ones throughout the hospital. Uh, there's a bike, bike rack that we looked at sitting outside. There's something that, like, you know, we can put down in jail for. And being a fireman, <laughs> um, there's, there must be 25, 30, 40, 50 oh, fire extinguishers. Um, do they just need to be refurbished? Or I, I don't know about. Yeah, they, they need to be inspected every yeah, so often. Yeah. Like but there's refurbished. nothing wrong. They and some of those are current. Things. The ones that are there are a lot of them yeah. are current. Right? They got a tag on them. I'm sure they have to be. And I know uh, John won some of the, the wall things, the stainless steel ones that mount into the wall to set the fire extinguishers in. He wants some of those for the jail. So that's something that needs. I don't know that you could pull them out of the wall yet. Yeah, not yet. yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. You might as well take the fire extinguisher out of that door and put it out the wall. <laughs> Can we ask for forgiveness? Yeah, well, <laughs> that's up to you. Just fill it in with plaster. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, um, we'll be busy next week trying to get some of that, this week and next week trying to get some of that organized. Mm -hmm. And you can let Luann know as soon as you find out from your contact whether that building will be available. Or where he's talking, yeah. I'm yeah, sure, yeah sure, sure. Or what he wants for it. I, I, we didn't really talk numbers, and he says it's up to his guy. Yeah, absolutely. Business. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's sure. good to know there's a space available. So. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Um, any reports on boards and commissions? We did have our economic alliance meeting last week, which we've already discussed. Um, last night we had our really long early childhood Iowa meeting because we have to have our um annual report in by the end of October and it's you know I, I should have brought it in there are a couple things that really bothered me um about um about the children's reading abilities and um their readiness to go to kindergarten the it was the thing that um, that I, I I kidded them because um, Sacred Heart, um, uh, what's the Catholic Church in Bellevue? St. Joe's. St. Joe's. Um, uh, your Catholic school in Bellevue, okay. Marquette. Marquette. Um, all of those were um, either 100% or 97% prepared. And in the reading aspect. And I said, oh, well, maybe it's because the, they make them read the Bible. <laughs> I don't know. But it, it was it was funny. But there was a lot of them. I was I was amazed. And so we're having Joanne Evans come in next month at our meeting to just tell us about the the um, literacy program that she's working with, the reading program, and just try to get some information because we had to put priorities of things we wanted to work on. And that was one of our priorities is making sure that the kids are 
ready to go to kindergarten, at least those that are getting Head Start and preschool programs. So, but other than that, uh, we had our MHDS meeting last week just to finalize the stuff that we have to submit to the state. And we got our budget, I think, done. We will approve it next Monday at our regular meeting, but um, we're still. The, the state legislators, I just don't know where they're at. With I see Lori is kind of have her hands. She's kind of up in the air there. What she, where, oh, where yeah. she should go and, and yeah. get to have a set of budgets. It's hard to set a budget when you don't have the programs initiated. And, and you know, we're talking about all of these additional programs, but there's no one to, ha no one to hire to provide them. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we talked about that last night. It, at our meeting too, because one of the areas that we were talking about for the children is in the area of mental health. And um, <coughs> you can't hire anybody because there's nobody out there that's- Well, they certainly know, need to take that into consideration when they want your fund balance to be down to X percentage by a certain time. I mean, we certainly just don't want to go throw money out. That's out right. The window, you know. So that's all got to be taken into consideration of what kind of Assets or what kind of what can we sustain if we do start something? You know, it's a couple of the things that they were talking about. They were only hiring one individual to provide the service for the five counties, and I said, you know, how is that going to work? And they said, well, we'll be lucky to be able to find one person to hire. So there you go. I I just don't think the legislators realized the. The ramifications the that they can cause. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have another meeting next Monday and that'll finalize our, our plans. So um, anything from any of your boards or commissions? I just did everybody, anybody have a chance to drive past the flags down there in the where they both put the jail and the building? Yeah, oh, I went, yeah. I went yeah. down and yeah. it. Yeah. I went down and got out and looked it over. Um. <coughs> Yeah, I don't know if we had. Does anybody that'll be in the paper tomorrow as far as the bid process for the building, correct? The public it was in the paper already. It was in last week. Was it in last week? Yeah. 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 Okay. Because they had two weeks. The 21st, isn't that when we open the bids? Yeah, the 21st. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so we had to give them two weeks' notice. And so that's done. Yeah. So are you going to ask these five players about your building? I no, already did. I, I mean about. Oh, no. Okay. So how, how much more room do we need? Or do you think we need more room when this gentleman called me? Do we need more room for? Well, Lo Lisa and I are going to go down and look at the piece by players to see how big it is and I how much. It's gonna it won't hold everything. No. Not we really, what you were talking we don't about. Need, we actually don't know how much space we do need though. No, we don't. It'll it'll be more if we get the stuff on December 8th that yeah. we want. That's when we're going to need some additional rooms because those are big pieces. So but I think any anything that we can get from there is only going to save us money mm -hmm. in the long run. Sure. Makes sense. Okay. Is there any other business to come before the meeting today? I don't have anything. Make a motion we adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion here.